Hello folks. I'm back out in the garage today and this time I'm reviewing an Everlast welder, specifically the 160i STH. This is a very inexpensive TIG welder, though it does cost a bit more than the cheap Amico TIG welders I've reviewed in the past. This welder was around $440 shipped versus $270 to $300 for the Amicos that I reviewed. But you do get more with the Everlast and I think it will be well worth the extra cost if it performs well. This welder has a five-year warranty. I do have more confidence in the Everlast warranty than the Amico, but keep in mind I have heard some mixed reports. Some people have said that they've had poor experience with Everlast customer service. In regards to the warranty, I've read about cases where Everlast was willing to ship parts to a customer so that they could repair the welder themselves rather than shipping the welder somewhere, but it is very possible that you will have to ship the welder if you uh, do need a warranty repair. As for my personal experience, I've only had occasion to contact Everlast once, and they were quick to respond and very helpful. The welder comes as a complete package, including a pretty flimsy case that only fits the welder without any cables or accessories. The stick electrode holder is pretty cheap and chintzy, but it should get the job done. The work clamp is decent. It's nothing spectacular, but it does have copper jaws, and it's not nearly as flimsy as the clamp that comes with the Amico. The TIG accessories are a big step up from what comes with the Amico. It comes with an Argon flow meter regulator, uh, which neither of the Amicos came with. So that's an added value that you would have to purchase separate for the Amico. The gas hose looked like it would be stiff and kink easily, but it's actually quite flexible and quite resistant to kinks. The TIG torch is a fairly standard 17 style torch, and I prefer this to the bulkier torches that come with the Amicos and even some other welders these days. It also comes with a torch switch. The switch is a bit bulky, but it's very easy to press, and since it's just strapped to this torch with zip ties, it can be moved and rotated around the torch to adjust the positioning to what you find the most comfortable. The torch has a denim sleeve to protect it from abrasion and to keep the main cable and the switch cable uh, kind of all together. This denim sleeve is much nicer than the stiff vinyl cover on the Amico torch cables, and overall the cable is surprisingly light and flexible. Not bad at all for an included torch. It comes with a pack of you know, basic torch parts that aren't anything special, but they will get you started. The welder itself is designed and put together much better than the Amico. Build quality inside and out isn't great. Uh, it was clearly built down to a price, but nothing seems sloppy or careless. The fittings and connections are all correct and work properly, and all of the features seem to be properly implemented. In terms of features, like the Amicos I reviewed, this welder does have high frequency start, but it also has the option for lift start and scratch start TIG. It has adjustable post flow from zero to 25 seconds, and it works as expected. It also has an adjustable downslope setting, which is really nice. The downslope setting allows current to taper off rather than stopping abruptly, even when you aren't using a pedal. It also has 2T and 4T modes. In 2T, when you push the torch switch, the arc will start and you will have to keep the switch held in to keep the current on. When you let off the switch, the welding current will either shut off immediately or start ramping down according to the downslope setting. With 4T, you push and release the switch to turn the current on, then push and release the switch a second time to turn the current back off. It also has a foot pedal mode that allows for on-off and full current control with a foot pedal. Stick mode is much simpler, but you do have an adjustable hot start feature. The adjustment knob here is just a, a continuous uh, digital adjustment, and if you just turn the knob, you get a fine adjustment of whatever the setting is displayed. If you push the knob and turn it, you get a coarse, real fast adjustment of whatever setting is currently displayed. So that's a pretty nice feature too. Now, features aren't everything. You can do a lot of fantastic TIG work with just a basic scratch dart setup with zero advanced features. But this welder just has a lot of the kind of major features that are really nice to have when TIG welding. This is a dual voltage machine, but I do wish the maximum output was a bit higher when running on 120 volts. Most dual voltage welders can do 110 amps or more on 120 volts. Some can go as high as 150 amps on TIG with a low duty cycle, though that's not super common. This welder caps at 90 amps when running on 120 volts. 
So not a huge deal, but it would have been nice to see a bit more. It comes with a 6-50 plug for running on 240 volts, and it comes with an adapter so that you can plug it into 120. The power cord is six feet long, so not the longest, but it's fine. It's also 12 gauge, which is plenty for this machine. The cooling fan is not the quietest, but it's not obnoxious. The fan does run all the time, no fan on demand feature. So I guess I've covered the important stuff, so let's fire this thing up and do some welding. The high frequency starts are definitely the weakest point of the performance. I haven't tried adjusting the contact points, so take that for what it's worth. But I'd say that the high frequency starting on this welder is similar to the first Amoco I tested and not as good as the newer Amoco TIG 185 that I looked at recently. Often, if you just put the tungsten near the part and push the switch, the high frequency just buzzes and the arc doesn't start. But if I just tap the tungsten against the part for a second, then try again, the arc will start right up. I quickly got in the habit of tapping the tungsten against the work for a second before I start. There were times when it was a bit annoying, but it's not difficult to work around when you get used to it. I also had an issue with the high frequency start not wanting to turn off when running at very low amperage. It didn't happen all the time, but it did happen once or twice. On the plus side, this Everlast does have the option for lift start and even scratch start. So you have options if the high frequency start ever fails, or if you're working on a project that is sensitive and you don't want to risk running high frequency system. Other than a few high frequency start hiccups, the arc was smooth and predictable. The adjustable downslope can provide a nice smooth taper off at the end of a weld, and the adjustable post flow allows plenty of range for the amperage that this unit provides. The downslope can even be used as a bit of an improvised pulse mode. In 2T mode, you can let off the switch and let the downslope start to taper off, then press the switch again before it tapers all the way off and the amperage comes right back up. This can actually let you vary the amperage a bit as you go and can allow you to limit heat towards the end of a weld even without a foot pedal. You can also just get a foot pedal and have full control over amperage with this machine. Overall, this is a very capable little TIG welder. It's not perfect, but you do get a lot for your money. It is just one of many options out there these days, and it probably won't impress anybody who's looking for a bit more premium machine. But it's also very inexpensive, and it could be great for someone who wants a relatively feature-rich TIG machine for under $500. I think anyone considering something like the Amico should seriously consider this little Everlast. It is built down to a price, and it has mixed opinions about the warranty. But it is better built, has better accessories, much better feature set, it includes an argon flow meter, and it can use a foot pedal, and it's designed and built so that everything works like it should. Personally, I think it's well worth the added cost over the Amico welders I've reviewed. That's it for today. Hopefully that was helpful. If there's anything else you want me to do with this little welder, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching. Take care.